everyone and welcome to another recreating famous racehorses in rival stars and if you commented on the last video there is a chance that your comment made it into this video so keep your eyes peeled but before we start that I'd just like to say on the 21st of May which is my birthday I will be going live and here is my PO box because if you send me anything and it gets to me before the 21st of May I will open it live on stream and give you lots of hugs and lots of love and lots of shout outs as well so if you're interested here is my PO box and I'd just like to say a big big thank you to Coco because he sent me a box for my PO box which I opened for Easter which I really loved it was a big Easter egg which I ate and I didn't get a photo of because I ate it so quickly and also a Schleich Dave which is my dad's horse who is currently up on my shelf I'll show a little video of him there and also a lovely card so I really appreciate that thank you to Coco without me waffling on we're gonna jump straight into the video so this is hello man of war this this is the same save as before. So we've got Man of War, Secretariat, Seabiscuit, and Ruffian. So those are the four that we made last time, so we won't be making them again. So we're gonna go straight to Creation Hub and create. Let's see who our first horse is. Right, so our first horse is Zenyatta. She was suggested to me by all of these users. She was born in 2003. Was anybody else born in 2003? Because my sister was. She is huge, standing at 17.2 hands, which is approximately 1.78 meters. And I think my dad is only just taller than that, so she's big. Uh, she was an American bred thoroughbred. She won 19 out of her 20 starts. She was 2010's American horse of the year, champion older female in 2008, 2009, and 2010, and she can be found in the National Museum of Racing and Hall of Fame. So she's a very, very famous racehorse. Uh, she also came first in all her races apart from her last one, which was the Breeders' Cup Classic, where she did come second. So it wasn't like she completely lost, she did come second. In November 2010, she retired to become a broodmare, which I believe is what she's still doing now. I think they have a Twitter account. So if you'd like to see an update on Zenyatta, you can go over there and have a look. Uh, so we're gonna be creating her today. So I'm going to spell it right because I had a couple of mishaps last time. Zenyata, there we go. And she is a mare. Now I put her down as a back preference horse because I watched all of these uh, horses races and she tended to kind of sit at the back, wasn't looking like she was doing that well. And then at the last kind of a couple hundred meters then she'd start running so I put her as a back preference the distance I'm gonna put like medium because I don't really know what like their preferences would be I'm kind of just making it up uh, and for the surface I am also gonna put medium because I'm not entirely sure uh, so as I said last time I'm going to max all of these horses because I really don't have time to be figuring out who was faster than who or who had more stamina so I'm just gonna just gonna max them all just to make everything a lot easier plus it'll make for nicer breeding as well because we'll get good uh, good statted little guys so let's have a look at what Zenyatta looks like she is a very very dark bay if not almost black but I know from experience rival stars does not do dark bays for some reason I don't know why it's like one of the most common racehorse um, colors. That's definitely not the maiden tail we're looking for. Unfortunate, because I think that color is probably the closest, but they made the horse blonde for some reason. Strange. Ooh, I'm tempted to pick this one, but I think the horse that we're gonna do later is gonna need that coat. So I think I'm gonna go with this one. I know it's a bit too gray for her, and she's got kind of like a warmer undertone, but it's fine, I'm just gonna leave it. So she does actually have a beautiful stripe that is thicker at the top and kind of thins down into um, quite a skinny stripe. So let's see if we can find something that looks like it. I think stripe lid probably is closest. Oh, but pike stripe, pike strip, that's, that's what it is. Pike strip is probably closest. It's a bit too small but I think I'm gonna go with it because stripe lid is just too big and it goes up to her forehead, which is not what it actually does. So she has no socks on her front legs, but at the back legs, I think, wait, is that the left one is slightly smaller, I think. So a half sock is fine actually. And I think her right one is bigger. The, 
the picture I'm looking at isn't actually that helpful for this. Actually, I'm tempted to go for a half sock here and then maybe like an irregular sock. Oh yeah, I'll go with an irregular sock, that works. So, here's our first horse. This is Zenyatta. Um, I'm very excited because next time we'll get to breed these horses. And, I, and the photo that I'm looking at, she has a beautiful little chestnut fold next to her and it's adorable. So we are going to upload the horse. You're welcome to, to buy it if you, if you can find it. Um, so the next horse we're going to be creating was suggested by all of these users and it is Black Caviar. Black Caviar is a wonderful horse. I also really like Black Caviar. I think Black Caviar is probably my second favorite next to Ruffian. Um, so Black Caviar was born in 2008, August of 2008. Uh, she is 16.2 hands, which is 1.65 meters. She is an Australian thoroughbred. Woo, go Aussies. Uh, she still stands undefeated in 25 races. She was one of the top rated thoroughbreds in the world and in 2012, she was also rated the world's best horse. That is a strong title to hold. To hold. Uh, she was also retired in 2013. I think she's still alive. I think she's either being a broodmare or she's just retired. So of course, Black Caviar is a mare. So first we have to put in, oh, we have to put in her name. There we go. She is a mare. I've put her um, position preference as middle. Um, and then I put her distance exactly as 1200. I can't remember exactly why I wrote that. I think one of the races I saw her do was 1200. Uh, but I'm not sure. I also put soft for track surface preference. I don't know why, but I did. So I'm just going to trust myself. So again, we're going to max stat her. So let's have a quick look at Black Caviar. Right, so this was the one that I was just talking about before. Black Caviar is super, like, she almost looks black. If you actually look at a photo, she's just incredibly dark. Dark bay, she's not actually black. But for the sake of the video, I might have to put her down as black. I will see. Where is the nun pattern? Why can't I find it? Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, so this was the one I was talking about because the one we were just looking at, I think that's actually closest. I think Ruffian's that color, but that's fine, I think. Yes, and the thing with Black Caviar is she has no markings whatsoever. She's got no no pattern, no uh, no stripe, she's got no, no socks either. So she's a very bland looking horse. Um, an incredible racer, but a bland looking horse nevertheless. That is black. Actually, that looks pretty close to be honest. Uh, it's a shame because Ruffian's the exact same color. I wish Rival Stars would add more natural like racehorse colors, um, but they're probably not gonna do that because they're branching out now. But here is Black Caviar, wonderful horse. We're gonna go ahead and save her. Right, back into the creator for our third horse, who is Tiger Roll. And this horse was suggested by all of these users and my mum. Tiger Roll was born in March, 2010. Is there anybody else who was born in 2010, let me know in the comments. I'm wondering, does anybody share a birthday with these horses? Because la yeah, last video, nobody could have really shared a birthday with them because they were like from 100 years ago or something. Um, but they can now. So he is 15.2 hands, which is approximately 1.5 four meters so he's kind of on the smaller side he's an irish bred thoroughbred he was actually bred as a flat racer which is the races that we run in rival stars um but then he ended up running in steeplechase races these are the ones with the really big hedge jumps which i don't know why they haven't added a mode for in this game because they have added a jumping mechanic but i don't know why they keep not gonna keep going with the racing but that that's fine um steeplechase races are the most dangerous with one in 27 horses horses dying from this race. So it is a very problematic race. I don't support it. The Grand National is a steeplechase race, which is not great. My mum actually bet on Tiger Roll in 2019, which is the same year that he won. So she got a little bit of ka-ching from him. Uh, Tiger Roll won the Grand National in 2018 and 2019. Uh, he came second in his final race and was retired in March, 2020. So he was literally retired this year. Um, so he's actually a gelding, which is not an, uh, which is not an option, which, I feel like it should be. I feel like if you're going to stop breeding at any point, you should make geldings, uh, but that's fine. So I'm just gonna put him as a stallion. Um, he is a middle preference, because again, he isn't some someone like Secretariat or even Zenyatta where they kept winning their races. He's, he's just somebody who did well a couple of times, but he's still very famous because I think he's like a very current horse. Uh, for the distance, I'm just gonna put the longest because the steeplechase races are incredibly long. Um, and for the track, 
track surface, I'm gonna put soft because he's Irish and I imagine the tracks there tend to be quite soft because it's muddy. Let's max him out. So for his appearance, he is a light bay. I'm really quickly gonna get rid of the pattern again because it always throws me off. He's just a really bland looking bay, if I'm being honest. Most of the racehorses are, as we've found out. Yes, oh, he has a little star as well. So he's the typical bay with like darker legs or like even black legs compared to his uh, brown body. I don't know if there's any options like that though. If there is one, we shall find it. Oh, that one's kind of close. That might be the closest we're gonna get, this one. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with this one. So he does have a, kind of a, like a splodge. It's probably called a star. I might be wrong though, but he's got kind of a, there, it, this is exactly that. It was just called a star. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, and he does not have any socks. So we gotta get rid of the socks. So he's not perfect. He needs a more kind of ready, ready bay, but that's probably the best we're gonna get. So we're gonna go ahead and save him. And our final horse, for today. Oh, it's a very interesting horse. So this horse has a whole, whole story behind it, which I will tell you while I'm creating the horse. So Farlap was suggested by all of these users, and he's a very interesting story, which I'm going to tell you in brief today. So he was born in October 1926, and he died in April 1932 making him only seven years old when he died of a mysterious and sudden illness. I'll get into that in a bit. He was 17 hands high, which is 1.74 meters. He was a New Zealand bred thoroughbred. Now I mentioned this later, but there's kind of controversy between like, because he was sold to an Australian uh, buyer. And so some people class him as an Australian racehorse and others a New Zealand. There's kind of like a, a mix between there. Uh, but much like Seabiscuit, he was initially an underdog. And just like Man of War, he gave many people hope during the Great Depression. Um, his name is actually derived from the Thai word lightning, which actually directly translates to sky flash. So that's pretty cool. Uh, when he was first purchased as a colt for 160 guineas, which it, at the time was 168 pounds, which in today's money is only about 7,000 pounds, which is nothing for a racehorse. Um, and he was sold to a trainer in Australia. When he arrived, he was this gangly, covered in warts, like scrawny, awkward, gated horse. And the buyer who sent the trainer to get the horse was absolutely furious. Um, and he refused to pay for this horse's training because he didn't want to put any more money into him. Uh, so the trainer, who had kind of been failing in his career, basically said, I'll do it for free. I'll train this horse for free in exchange for two thirds of the horse's winnings. So he had like a contract for three years to, so it would give him the motivation to like really properly train this horse because his money was at stake, uh, at stake basically. So in his maiden race, which is his first race, he came last. And in the next three races, he didn't place. So he didn't come first, second or third. Um, uh, but in April 1929, he won his first race and pretty much from then on, he did exceptionally well and moved up in the classes. So he didn't continuously win, but he'd place, he'd sometimes get first. Um, as his achievements grew though, people started having it out for this horse. Uh, so in 1930, some criminals turned up at the track that he was working at um, and tried to shoot him. Uh, after he finished his morning track work and they missed, thankfully. Uh, and later that same day that they tried to shoot him, he won the Melbourne Stakes. And then three days later, he won the Melbourne Cup. So somebody had it out for this horse and they didn't want him to win, but he did anyway. Um, so in his total career, Farlap won 37 of the 50 time, 51 times that he raced. Um, then he was shipped to Mexico where he then won the highest purse money ever offered in North American racing. Now, just to catch you up, the trainer who first kind of believed in him was actually now joint owner because he had earned enough through uh, Farlap to purchase basically half of the rights to him. Uh, he didn't actually want him going to North America. He didn't want him going to Mexico at the time, uh, but the original guy who bought him uh, wanted to be to basically earn money. Um, and in early 1932, during a visit, to Farlap stable while they were in North America, um, they found Farlap in severe pain with a really high temperature. Uh, and pretty soon after that, he passed away. Then an autopsy was done and it revealed that his stomach and intestines were inflamed. And then they were led to believe that he was 
deliberately poisoned, that somebody came along and poisoned him uh, as he was winning these incredible, uh, this incredible amount of money and lots of races. But since then, the waters have gotten a bit murky because there've been lots of studies done on what may have caused this horse's death, but they all come to different conclusions. So you can look it up, there's some really interesting research, but nobody's been able to find like concrete evidence on what actually happened to this horse. So this is pretty much the end of this great racehorse's career and life, uh, but his legacy lived on in books, research, documentaries, and in movies. Uh, if you're intrigued about this case at all, like I was, definitely let me know if you think that he was poisoned or if something else had happened. And if you think something else had happened, what do you think actually went down that day? Uh, so fun fact, the console version of this game, aka Rival Stars, is actually called Farlap in, um, in honor of him, I suppose. So yeah, that is Farlap. Right, and here is our Farlap. So we're gonna go ahead and save. And now I'm going to basically go and purchase all of these horses and we'll run them each in one single race. So I'll get on with doing that. Right, so I've gone ahead and purchased all of the horses that we just made. So we've got Farlap, Tiger Roll, Black Caviar, and Zenyatta. They're all in our stables now. So that takes the total of mares we have up to three, which is perfect because we have three uh, breeding stalls for next time. So we're gonna jump straight into racing these guys. Now I'll do the same thing I did last time. I'll find there we go, Zenyatta's up first, it would seem. Uh, her odds are five, and I'm super excited to see her race. So we'll hire a rider, a jockey, and we'll start the race. It's race on here at Queen Victoria Park. Avocado Amethyst, also off to a good start. Alias Avocado Amethyst in second place. And here comes number five, Bamboo the Dragonfly in first spot. Poison Tincture is coming with a huge brand change. Delicious Dragon. T. Einstein is right there. Colonel John in the white colours. Summerbird has the red cap in the Vanguard too. Rip Van Winkle is on the outside and twice over foot. Hard chain is the front runner. Twice over is next, then also Jim. Gio Conti is behind that pin. she was like kind of at the back middle of the pack and then she like in the last bit oh that was like watching a real race i love that i don't know why but sometimes when i'm playing this game like my horses are actually like too good so they end up like so far at the front like there's no competition but like that was awesome i also completed a uh, goal that's cool uh okay tiger rolls up next now tiger roll isn't a flat racer he's a super chase but we'll see how he does nevertheless that's funny actually that they automatically put like a like a mask on him because in all of the photos i've seen he also has like a like a mask fly mask thing on so that's pretty cool right let's see how tiger roll does i'm excited now zenyata that was in a brilliant race i'm happy with that one. Oh, i'm riding oh god i okay i messed up i'm riding okay ah because of my bad start this is not gonna end well well that went brilliantly we gotta get on that line. I might, um, okay, I'm gonna take a chance and try and move up. Oh, this is not a good position to be on a turn. This is not a good position to be on a turn. I'm in trouble. I'm in so much trouble. Mmm, move over. Move over! Right, all right, I, I, mm, we're not in a great position now because they're leaving. Okay, never mind. I need to remember how to actually play this game. I haven't played this game in ages. Like, actually playing it. Come on, Tiger Roll, you and me, BB. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. I feel like this is fate because my mum bet on this horse and she, I think she bought us cake with the money. So that was nice. Have I started too early? No way, no. Yes, that was so much cooler. Okay, I'll probably run Tiger Roll again so that we can actually see the race. And despite the fact that I just kind of breed and make horses, I can actually race. I'm actually pretty good at racing, hence how I have so much gold. Okay, well that's perfect. Tiger Roll can run again. So we'll this time hire a rider and we'll watch the race. So, right, time for me to put my feet up <laughs> and enjoy the race this time. That was terrifying. <laughs> Horses and jockeys ready for the off at Queen Victoria Park. Number seven, the favorite in an interesting lineup.
Gate spring, a great start for the favourites. Jellyfish Lynch taking the inside line. The Grand National of 2019 on the run to the first of 30 fences. General Principal is one of the first to shout with Jellyfish Lynch. Train the water in seventh spot. Trying to brush off Howling Harlequin. Number seven, maintaining the... It's the third and step back has taken over. Jumps it ahead of Magic and Light and Go Conquer and Don Poli in the black jacket. Rob the Caswell makes a very bad mistake. Hit and hit, it's Pope's Arthur. From the outside comes... Away, so too noble endeavour. Single farm payment is three quarters of the way back. Jellyfish Limish in second place. Sandwich has slipped straight for the first time. They will be bypassing fence number 17. Behind, it's Howling Howling. Trying not to be outstripped by pain and water. Just behind, it's Amateur Excellent. Number 70, and Magic of Light. Manella Rocco is to the outside of the field. Just has a margin over Jellyfish Limish. Next, it's Hope's Artvar. A length away, it's Sandwich Suspicion. Then, Howling. Vinden Live Love Laugh still very much up there with Walk in the Mill. So in with Amateur Excellent. There is the race moves on. From Sandwich Suspicion. And then it's Alan Harmon, Payne Porter in seventh position, pushing hard in front of Amateur Exit. And it is Tiger Roll that now takes the advantage coming to the... Got in their ideal position. Jellyfish Lynch next. Hopes hard in front. Sandwich suspicion. 700 out into the waves. Hopes hard bar. Number seven in control. Magical sense wants the run. Away with a huge margin from Jellyfish Lynch. Four minutes behind. It's the race continues with number seven. Magical six in second spot has three it out from Jellyfish Lynch. As they begin to spring toward the line, it's number seven. Magical six in second place. Right, okay, so Tiger Roll ran, ran twice, one with me, but that's fine. Farlap, yes, here we go, right. Farlap can run. Farlap is the one with the very tragic backstory. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to see how he does. And he's technically on disputed home turf. So um Waiting he's running in Australia. Let's go. Ready to rumble. Steel shellfish shows great natural pace. Detective Love is also in the run. Being overwhelmed by flame flight. Salmon's violence in fourth position, just behind it. done far lap that was epic so his his legacy truly does live on in this game right and our final horse to run is black caviar that's it um so i think because of the way i set black caviar up she's not actually suited for this racetrack never mind i've just found her so our final racer is black caviar i'm so this is an definitely an australian horse let's go <laughs> i'm excited for this one final race of the day number five let's go They're ready to go at Queen Victoria Park. Number five, the favorite for this race. They're just about ready. Stand by, and they're racing. Blonde behavior, jump. And they're off and racing. And Bell Sprinter came out last of all. Black Caviar began well. Rain Affair was the best industry. Number five, still in the lead. Fast Haggis wants the front. Breeze, Rontosaurus on the rails. Time, Halish was out a little bit wider. Atomic Force just up in front of it, followed by Tidal and Sea Siren. Bell Sprinter saving ground. Now he's railing up onto them. Second place on their back is Blot Behaviour, putting in a strong bid with successful sensation, followed by Fast Haggis. Number five in first position. And in a heartbeat, she raced up and hit the lead. She's giving Sydney some of the black magic. And look at her going, Black Caviar. She raced away. She's going to set a new Group 1 record in Australia. She's truly in a league of her own. Black Caviar racing away from Epaulette. Field just in front of Glover Hayden. Success. 
successful sensation. Pressure just behind. Lady one charging through. Number five at the front. Brontosaurus in second place, just behind. It's blood behavior. As they race toward the line, it's number five. Brontosaurus in second, trying not to be outstripped. What a wonderful race. I really enjoy those. So next time we will definitely be breeding these guys. So have a quick look at our stable and tell me who we should breed to who. Bear in mind the mares and the stallions need to be bred together and we might do another episode of adding horses as well. So definitely put your favorite race horses or the ones you'd like to see in this game down in the comments below. So that was brilliant. I had loads of fun and don't forget about coming to the stream on the 21st of May and send anything to my PO box if you wish to be shouted out. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Stay positive and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!